What's up, everybody? Yeah, I look a little different, don't I? That's because my friend the doctor took pity on me and sent me this awesome fishing shirt from America. It's even got vents and everything. And it's super lightweight. Sometimes I forget I'm wearing it, and I wonder, am I naked? But I'm not. It's really weird. So thank you, doc, for this awesome shirt. A friend of mine just bought an awesome tanto from the Muramachi Jidai. Muramachi? Mura, 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 Muramachi. Mura, Muromachi period. Now, if you don't know, the Muromachi period in Japan is like 500 years ago. That's a long time ago. To put it in perspective, America is about 200 years old. That just always, that always kills me. I don't know why, you know. Some people drink in bars in Europe that are like 400 years old too, you know. When I told my Yokohama group, the, my Japanese students, that this was from the Muromachi Jidai, the whole group just was like, oh my god, Muromachi Jidai, that's like 500 years old. So they know how old this is. It's also good to point out here that the Muromachi Jidai it was a period which was a very beautiful period in Japan in, in that uh, the artistic uh, creativity of that period was like at its peak here. So they had really wonderful um, artwork there, including the swords and the scabbards and the sayas. Um, again, I, I, say, I say the words in English and in Japanese, but uh, including things like, you know, hilts and handles and the accoutrements that go along with it. And I really like the koshirai, which is from the Edo period, which is not that long ago, a few hundred years ago maybe. Um, but what I like about it is that it's, um, the handle here, it's quite nice. It's not your typical wrapped handle, it's some sort of lacquered handle, maybe it's bamboo, I didn't quite ask what it was about. Um, and the beautiful saya here, or sheath, is just very plain. Uh, we say shibui in Japanese. If you see the end cap here, everything is just kind of Shibuya is what we call like mature or just uh, very, um, I don't know what you'd say, adulty in English. Does that make any sense? I don't know. But it's just a, a very um, subtle type of koshirai or again, sheath and handle here. Again, you have the little button here. Um, that actually holds the blade in. They look like they're chrysanthemums or one side looks like maybe big. No, I guess they're some sort of flower. I don't know which flower they are. But now let's take a look at this bad boy. One thing that sticks out right away is that this is an aikuchi. And I explained that before on some of my short videos, I think, uh, in that aikuchi means that there's no suba here. There's no suba. And aikuchi means that the two mouths meeting, right? So there's no hand guard there between the uh, handle and the uh, saya or sheath, right? The Edo period uh, is where the koshirai or the handle and the saya and the accoutrements on the side here which is interesting for this one here we have the uh, uh, kozuka which is a small blade on the side of it so you see that so you can use this well for anything you want really uh, killing cutting your food uh, sewing whatever you need a knife for you can use this for right so that's called the kozuka and that goes on the side of your blade here and I'll slip it right in here you can see that kozuka so it's really nice to have you know koshirai you know, especially on a tanto like this, that has the um, both sides of it. We have the kozuka here, and then over here we have the kogai. And the kogai was used for just all kinds of daily purposes, right? Now this is an interesting, again, an interesting aspect to this tanto here, in that we have a wadi kogai. Now wadi kogai means that, let me put this down for a moment, a wadi kogai means that these come apart, see that? They come apart like that. And now you could use these for, you know, as we call in, say in Japan, ohashi, you know, or chopsticks. Um, you could throw them as shuriken. As well, you could throw the kozuka as a shuriken or a weapon, right? So you can throw these as well. You can use them for, like I said, chopsticks. You can use them for your hair, whatever you want, scratching your ear. Maybe even, maybe even uh, write a letter with these. I don't know. Uh, Whatever you think you need, you know, some metal utensils for, you can use it. So they're kind of unusual. Um, they're called wadi, uh, wadi kogai. Now a normal kogai, and not this wadi kogai from this sword, will look more like this. You see it's just one piece here. And so you can see this is more like for just everyday use for whatever you need some sort of needle for, right? Even this little scoop at the end here, you can see it over here. That could have been used for, they say, to, you know, mix uh, like powdered medicine into your drinks or something like this. So whatever you needed it for, your imagination is the limit. Uh, you would have these little pieces of metal on there, your kozuka, which is a blade, or your uh, kogai, which can be used for anything. Of course, they can both be used for anything, but uh, they just have different, you know, use, they have different properties, so they can use them different ways.
There we go. That's a 500 year old blade. Can you believe that? Now you can probably see the hamon on it. You got a nice little hamon all the way up across the boshi here. Uh, the boshi is called the tip of the sword here. Uh, boshi means kind of hat, right? So uh, I know some people say, oh man, you shouldn't be talking in front of a sword, you know, because you're going to be getting your spit all over it, you know. But I, I mean, I could do this, right? I could be like, uh, and then you wouldn't understand me. So, you know, look, rules are meant to be, <laughs> rule, there's a lot of rules out there, right? But anyways, you just wipe it down and put some more oil on it, right? No big deal. Okay. So anyways, you see the hamon there, beautiful hamon. The blade looks really well, it's not uh, hagopori, ha, hago, uh, ha, ha, <laughs> it doesn't have any nicks in it, hagobo, ha, hagobori, that's so hard, hagobori, it's difficult to speak in English and in Japanese at the same time, hagobori, ha, hagobori, damn it, anyways, it's got no nicks in the blade, okay, jeez, my brain is hurting, anyways, you see that, so it's a very beautiful blade, the, 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 the hada, or what we call the skin of the blade, I don't know if you can see that, I've got a camera, I don't know what the camera up there is picking up, but the, the skin of the blade is very nice. It fits in your hand really well. You know, I really don't, you know, it might have been just for show. I don't know. Or maybe it had a different handle on it. I really don't like Aikuchi that much. I mean, yeah, slashing is fine. But when you stab and things are getting wet, you know, um, you're likely to just go, and, you know, cut your hand uh, pretty badly. So I would prefer to have a little hand guard on there, even though the Tanto hand guards are small, it's better than nothing, right? I, I, um, but these are really kind of oshare or fashionable, this uh, Koshirai, and it really, I think, uh, lends itself really, really well to this, the blade, this uh, handle and sheath, right? It's just, it's really beautiful. But again, if you're going to actually use this, I'd probably want some sort of hand guard so my hand doesn't slip up the blade if I'm actually using it in combat. Now, by the way, this sword is 500 years old, so it could have been used in combat. So what you have to remember, let me put this back here. I think we've seen enough of that, right? Um, what you should remember when you bring a, you know, a weapon like this into your home is that, especially one of these older ones where it's quite possible that it was used in warfare, you should maybe light a candle and put it, you know, in maybe your sacred place in your house and uh, say whatever kind of prayer you want. Like we say often in the Bujinkan, we say, Shikin Hanmets Daikomyo. And it's just we're kind of praying for uh, the people who use the blade and maybe people who the blade was used against, right? Just for everyone's well being. So remember, when you bring a, an old sword in your house, you do kind of want to, uh, you know, we say, Oh Harai, or just uh, respect it and uh, say a few prayers for the people that have, have used it, have had been used had it used on them, and also the people who kept this blade in such immaculate condition for 500 years to thank them as well. So when you come into your house, you put it, well, we have kamidanas here in Japan, but in your sacred spot, and uh, say a little prayer. We say again, shikin hamis daikomyo, and uh, light a candle for it. Do that a couple times, and uh, it's just, it's a good thing to do. So there you have it, a 400, 500 year old tanto from the a few announcements. I know many of you know that we're going to have the Daikomyo Sai party this year. No big Daikomyo Sai training, just a party. Uh, and Sensei will be there. So we're going to do everything we can this year to get Sensei up to that second floor and be more of the party where he can join in and be happy and, and just be part of the group more than he was last year. So I really hope if you have a chance to get here to the Daikomyo Sai this year, uh, please do come. Yeah, we're going to be having training. The normal teachers at the Hombu Dojo will be there. I'll be there. The rest of the teachers should be there. So we're going to have a lot of training leading up to it on our normal training days. And, and the Hombu Dojo is pretty full of teachers now. So we'll be training all the way up to the Daikomyo side. And then we'll have the party with Sensei. Sensei won't be partaking in the training. We'll be doing the teaching of the training. But we'll have training after the Daikomyo side as well. So if you do make it over here, there'll be lots to do. Again, December is a wonderful time to be in Japan. The weather is perfect. You can go around and visit the uh, beautiful hot springs at that time. It's really awesome to soak in a hot bath at that time. So really look forward to seeing you. If you can make it over, we're going to have a great time. Come over and see Sensei. You know, you don't know how many more chances you get to see Sensei. Take your picture with him. Say hi. Say thank you. Whatever you want, it, your message. Come on over. Uh, you know, give him a message. Say hello to him. I'm sure he's so happy to see people. Also, I'll be going down to Australia uh, in September, about a month and a half away. I'll be in Adelaide with my friend Ed Lomax. Ed Lomax is so kind. Ed, thank you for uh, bringing me down again to your wonderful country. Adelaide is a beautiful city. So if any of you Australians are down there, whether you're all over, I know that's a huge country down there, but uh, I'll be there over the 9th and 10th of September 
So uh, mark that in your calendar, and if you've got nothing else to do, or if you've got something to do, just cancel that and get there. We're going to have a good time. It's going to be a lot of fun. So that's all i got for you today. So I hope that brightens your day, keeps you motivated and training, and just overall having a good day. So if you like the video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And if you're so inclined, you can make a donation at the link in the show notes below.